Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split to Say DIY, and today I'm going to be looking at two PCBs that I sent off to Fab recently. They were purely like experimental. They weren't for a specific project. They were kind of the, to prep for future projects, uh, and so uh, and they're both very different too. Um, one's a little bit more utilitarian, uh, and the other one is actually purely art based. So there's there's that. Uh, and so I think uh, we can start off with the art one. I'm going to be talking about PCB art a little bit and kind of the method I've been using, which is a little bit different than what you hear about um, in most tutorials. So I thought I'd share it. Uh, so what I want to start off with is this art PCB, and you'll be able to see a close up uh, being filmed behind me uh, by my trusty camera. My buddy, my pal, Katie Telling, uh, she makes art. Uh, she does a lot of stuff with collage, uh, poetry. She's an amazing writer, uh, and so uh, we've been friends for a really long time. Uh, she goes by Poetic Rituals on social media, and we've been trying to talk about recently, like how we could like kind of combine our powers to like work on projects together. Because uh, I really like her aesthetic, uh, and actually, I'm wearing a T-shirt uh, with one of her collages on it. The Whiskey Chronicles. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones by her. Uh, and she has a Teespring store. I'll link that down in the description. Um, but I, I basically wanted to... I thought her collages could translate really well to PCB art because the nature of collage, as you can see here, it kind of... it has this kind of grittiness to it. And I thought um, kind of limiting uh, the color palette to uh, what's available with PCBs could be really cool. Uh, and so thus came this little kind of test one, uh, Filth Horror Glamour, one of my other favorite ones from her. Let me show you, let me transition. So that's the original scan. So you can see, like, very different. <laughs> um, and actually, you can see, um, it's funny because uh, that's the Electro Smash pedal. Um, the, oh, what one is it? The Pedal Pie. And there's a Raspberry Pi there because uh, I actually um, had a couple, like, Hackspace magazines. Uh, and I gave them to her to like help contribute to her art, and it was interesting when she was using those because like she doesn't know what like an Arduino is or like a breadboard is, but she's kind of using it purely for the art aesthetic and like kind of a statement of like she was really juxtaposing like tech and feminism and stuff. So that was pretty cool to see. Uh, so it was, it was very interesting for me because like here you can see some LEDs and stuff in the back. But anyway, so that's the original art, um, and so. I've done a couple things with PCB art um, at this point, and I followed along with tutorials by Andrew Soa and others. I, I kind of wanted to share what I've done uh, that's different, uh, because at the end of the day, I think I'm a little bit lazier when it comes to software and like what I'm willing to do. Uh, as you can see, um, basically I brought her collage into Illustrator. Illustrator is the um, kind of art software I'm using. I'm using Eagle for the PCB. As you can see, it it came out the way I basically have it here. Uh, and so Andrew and others go over how you basically make it so that there are only five colors happening on your art. You uh, basically constrain the colors uh, and um, you can either keep the defaults or then you can kind of edit things up. I edited this one a bit so that all the letters would be the substrate or FR4, which is where there's there's no silk screen, there's no solder mask, there's no copper, there's nothing. So I wanted the letters to look like that. And um, I also like made it so that on the face, on the faces, there would be a different facial detail that was copper. Uh, and I made it so that their headband was copper. So like on here we have the nose that's copper and the nails. Uh, and then for the eyes, I made that copper, the eyebrow here, and then the lips here. Uh, and so there's a lot of tutorials out there talking about the layers and everything. Um, but I kind of want to talk about what I do after this step because this is kind of basic. But um, once I get the colors all set, uh, I export to PNG file, which is also still pretty standard. So basically you export a copper, and so that's where all the copper is going to be, whether it's exposed or under the um, solder mask. If it's under the solder mask and you get the lighter color, 
as you can see there. If it's just the mask on the FR4, then that's why it's darker. Um, so that's a cool effect you can play with. So that was my copper layer. And then this is my mask layer everywhere where there's going to be color. I'm, I went with Oshpark for these, so they're purple, but there's that. And then there's the silk screen, which is all of the white. And that's right here. Um, so you ex you're basically going to be exporting those three files, uh, and then you have to get them into Eagle. And you can't just import pictures into Eagle. There's a lot of scripts out there for SVGs or DXF or all that, um, but it requires a lot more processing to your image. You have to make sure you have like no straight lines and all the stuff has to be the right size. It can get really tedious really fast and I've tried I've tried to do the SVG import but I've never gotten it to work well and even if I've gotten it to go into the program it's still not like functional on a level so it's it's just really frustrating and I know it's possible people do it all the time but I just I don't have the bandwidth I don't have the spoons so what I started doing is using Microsoft Paint to convert into bitmaps. Uh, you can import bitmaps directly into, uh, and here's my logo that I actually just used to put on a board. Um, you can use bitmaps, and let me open this up in paint, uh, to go directly into Eagle, which is really nice. So basically what you do is you bring in your PNG to paint or other, um, I'm on Windows, I'm using paint, but any free Thing. Uh, and then you just do file, save as, bitmap, do a monochrome, so it'll make it black and white. Um, I'm just going to call this test. Then you save, you go yes, of course, it's fine. There you go, there's your bitmap. And then if we go into Eagle, I'll show you the project that this came from. You can see everything's um, there. Uh, and like all our layers are here. Let me hide the top copper layer. But these are all imported as bitmaps. And it it just works. <laughs> and yeah. Now probably the main criticism with bitmaps is that as you can see, it's not a solid image. It's a series of lines. So you can screw it up really fast if you just go woo and it's it's gone forever. Uh, but let me and I'm just going to import a bitmap just to show you what happens. So what you do is you go to File, Import, Bitmap, right there, good. Go OK. And then uh, I'm going to import my logo just to show you uh, what I've been doing with that recently. Uh, so I'll bring in this, open. You select what color you want to bring in. So if you wanted to do kind of an inverted version, I could just bring in the white and it would be fine. But I'm going to bring in the black just to you do OK. Uh, you can also show the bitmap so you can see what you're bringing in to make sure. Um, and then you can either do DPI, which um, if you wanted to keep it the same, uh, you could just you could do that, or you can do scaled. The uh, reason I've been doing scaled, um, one will keep it the same size, or you can do like 0.25 if you need it to be a quarter. You will get a higher resolution if you are shrinking it down. That's something to keep in mind. So you can like use your measurements in Illustrator. My cats are having a fight. You can use your measurements to figure that out. I'm just going to keep it at one since we're keeping it simple here, just a demo. You go OK, then you run scripts. And you can see it's starting to come in on the bottom of the screen. And it will land basically in the bottom corner coordinates here. And then because it's the only thing there, it grows up. But um, one thing I wanted to show you, and I'll just quickly go back. You can choose which layer it imports to. Uh, so by default, it's going to go 200, which is kind of the spare bitmap layer. I tend to do that um, in general. But um, you can also set it to the target layer. So like when I was importing on on filth horror glamour i knew what layer i wanted each thing to go on to so i could just send it there and it would be fine um so that's pretty cool but if you aren't sure what layer or you think you're going to want to move it around like this logo i'd want to maybe move it um, around on the board so that it would fit what you can do is you just use the the grouping and you highlight 
And I like to hide my other layers when I'm doing this so that I can just like mindlessly highlight it. And then you just click on the move and then you right click move group. And now I'm moving it and I can put it anywhere I want. So as long as you group it, it's fine. It just, it's something to just keep in mind. Um, so yeah, so it's still on layer 200 though. So once I get to where I want it to go, uh, you can change layers of things pretty easily of Eagle with just this little wrench change thing. And then you do layer, and then let's say I wanted it to be this nice exposed copper, I could just click top layer, press OK, and then you right click on your group, change group. And there you go. Uh, so that's how I've been doing PCB art with Illustrator and Eagle. Uh, those are just the tools I'm using right now. Um, and it's it's worked out. Um, you can see like you can see what I got on this board from Osh Park is one for one what's on my Eagle project and also what's in my Illustrator project and what is on Katie's art. So it works out. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm going to be sending these up to Katie uh, so that she can have them. Uh, I just did a trial run because I, I wasn't sure how it would go. Um, and there was one mistake on my part. I put, I think I somehow deleted the drill that I wanted at the top because it clearly didn't come through. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. Cause I was thinking they could be like pendants. Yeah, this was just like a test and also why I kept it small. And I mean, in general, when you do non like useful PCBs, uh, as much as I love PCB art, there is that environmental factor that you want to keep in mind. So that's another reason why I kept it small. Um, this is probably just big enough that you still appreciate the detail, but small enough that you're not like wasting space. Uh, so this is just to test to see how the art came through. And I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, I, I think it came out great. Uh, of course, Osh Park is also known for having like pretty high detail too. So um, yeah, so pretty happy with this. And that's how I've been doing PCB art. Uh, I'm hoping to expand on this, either make it um, maybe a little smaller with some drill holes, um, maybe so it could be a pendant, because uh, Kitty also makes jewelry or um, to add some electronics in with some cool effects. And that actually is a perfect transition that I just set up for myself. So the next PCB I did involves electronics as, as a PCB should really. As you can see, it's a blinking LED and there's a couple things going on here that I'm pretty proud of. First of all, it's very small. Here's the other PCB that we just looked at for scale. Completely dwarfs it. And that's already pretty small. Actually, I can use a Lego minifig. Here's Sally Ride in Lego form. It's very small. So I'm pretty proud of that. Definitely the smallest PCB I've ever done. That's also functional. Uh, and then as you can see, uh, the LED is shining through the back, which is fantastic. Um, and the front kind of gives it away. This is a test of the reverse mount LED system. Uh, so basically what I did was I um, put in a square on both sides to expose the FR4 so that we could do some shine through effect, which I'm pretty excited about. That means you can mount LEDs on the back and you can have them shine right through. Uh, you'd think that might discolor the LED, but it, it really doesn't. Uh, now the LED I'm using there is meant to be reverse mounted. It's actually especially designed for that. And when we turn around, you'll, you'll see that. But I also am going to solder up one of the other ones I have for this, uh, this board. Um, so that uh, I can see if like just a regular SMD LED, how that looks um, just soldered backwards basically. Uh, so that'll be kind of the next experiment. But so far I've only soldered up one. And the third and final thing that I'm really proud of with this, if we turn it around, it is not using a 555, oh no. Just using uh, two transistors, two capacitors, some resistors, and it's just rocking a coin cell. The only thing I forgot that would have made it perfect is a switch. I didn't put an on off switch. I totally forgot. I need to leave like a note on my desk because I'm becoming pretty notorious to myself at least for leaving switches off and it's very frustrating. <laughs> but I always forget. I do. I just always forget. Even with my um, remote control for my uh, rover robot, I didn't put on a switch and it really would have made the whole thing so much 
better. Like, ah, so I need to, I think I'm, I might even 3D print a little sign like, did you include a switch? <laughs> so, or something like that, maybe something catchier. So it's a little blinky uh, LED board and I've been, um, and this might sound maybe a little dumb to people that have a little bit more experience with electronics, but I've been trying to figure out a circuit for a while that didn't involve a 555 or IC of any kind where I could just blink an LED. Um, and I wanted that because I wanted it to be this like a small circuit so that I could um, just accomplish that in a small footprint uh, without too much like extra extra stuff, you know? Uh, so David Watts, um, he did a video where uh, he put together a nice little kit. It was a, a lighthouse kit. It was just a flashing LED, but um, it featured the circuit. And he went over the circuit in the video and uh, I copied it down <laughs> and took screenshots and breadboarded it out to test and uh, it, it worked. Um, I, I mean, obviously it was gonna work. Uh, and so I decided I wanted to do a surface mount version so that I could see if it would work on a PCB, uh, and it did. And if we go to the Eagle project, here it is. Uh, the other thing I'm pretty proud of is with the exception of this one trace, and I think if I had just gotten a little bit creative, I probably could have um, accomplished this. Everything's routed on one side. Uh, and here you can see the FR4, the cutout. Um, and I actually also edited this LED footprint, so it would be like the perfect size for that reverse mount LED, which pretty into. Um, and there's my logo, which is copper on the front. So a couple reasons why I'm very into this and also the fact that it's basically all routed on one side. Um, with the art PCB, if uh, we make more or anything like that, uh, it what's tricky is on the front you might have exposed copper and all these things and so your electronics are kind of limited. So it's just another hurdle. So if you have this small circuit that can kind of just live on the back and not bother anything, uh, then, you know, it really should be the art, like limiting itself for the circuit, but it, it, these are the times we're in. Um, it, it makes it so that it's very doable. And I would love to do, actually, I would love to do this collage here with the heart make that FR4 and have a blinking light on the back, not to give away like my uh, thing, but uh, that's one idea I've told Katie and she seemed to be into it. So uh, yeah, that's something I would love to do. Um, and it just makes it a little bit more possible. And the other reason why is um, you may recall back in at the holidays, I made that ornament PCB and I want to do another holiday PCB for sure. But I, want it to, I wanted it to blink and not have to use a 555 because that just drives up costs. And that's the nice thing about this circuit uh, is that it's cheap. Like it's using very affordable and easy to get components. Um, it's just a 470 ohm resistor, 220K, 220K, 82K. So that was another little test. I also want to test shine through LED. Uh, so those are the two PCBs that I did recently. Uh, very different, but uh, I'm proud of both of them for different reasons. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. I'm going to leave links to Katie Telling's uh, stuff down in the description. She's Poetic Rituals on social media. She's very active on Instagram, Twitter. She has a Teespring shop where you can get uh, t-shirts of her art and also stickers, if that's more your speed. Um, She's uh, one of my best friends and she's making cool art and uh, I'm hoping to do a couple more projects with her and hopefully maybe get these out there for, uh, for people. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing to more content like this. Have a good one and I'll see you real soon.